Why are they everywhere? He was on the trends yesterday, but forget about that news. It's positivity for us, so that's what we're going to dwell on this morning. Welcome back from the break. This is a very big conversation for us. We've been waiting for it, and of course, Tim Westwood is here. One human being, one of the long seven radio DJs. He's made us so attractive. Can you even imagine that he's almost 65? He oh, was gosh. born on the 3rd <laughs> of October, 1957. <laughs> right. That's when Ghana gained Yo. independence. No, 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 but we need to talk about it. How are you even 65 and looking this well, I'm way? I'm not actually. I'm, You're almost 65. I'm actually 100. <laughs> So, so when you're and we keep it 100. We, we just want to keep it. You just yeah. want to keep it 100 for a long time, but as long how, as it lasts. But how, how are you looking like this? How have you kept it 100? I think it's the jollof. I, get... I think it's the yeah. The basmati rice in the jollof really helps. You eat jollof in the UK uh, all the time. Who makes it for you? Um, my Ghanaian wives. <laughs> so, I'm playing, yeah, I normally uh, normally go to the restaurants. Okay, so you know a number of restaurants mm. that um, you eat your jollof from. Yes. When first did you have your first plate of jollof? Do you remember? Oh, way back. I mean, I've been eating jollof since uh, I was a young one. Okay. So, mm. have you... I like rice balls. I like... You like you know, rice yeah, balls? Uh, yeah, and peanuts. With peanut butter soup? Yeah, I love peanut. I don't like the palm oil, but I like the peanut. Are you kidding? No, I'm real. So, who are you? Are you even Ghanaian or you're British? Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Wow. Is, it, is it the same way you've tasted Nigerian cuisine? I mean... Do, you, you're trying to be You know, I do actually safe. put Ghanaian jollof is definitely got the edge. 100. Okay, that's it. Mm. I think it's settled. If Tim Westwood has confirmed on this show that Ghanaian jollof has the edge, then it's In done. Nigeria. Yeah. If you guys are watching, this 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 is just the end. <laughs> well, Welcome great, to great Ghana. Great to be in Africa. It's been a it's been a while. I, I, there was a time I was coming along, like 2013, <clears throat> 2014, 2015. We we're up to here doing parties all the time. Yeah. And then um, was going to Lagos quite a bit after that. Okay. And now we're now back here. It's it's amazing because I thought this was actually your first time, but me oh, means no, that no, no, you've been times. here a number of times. Yeah, yeah, I love but it. But was it qu more quiet than this one? Because this one has been blown up. No, I think the energy right now is amazing out here. Mm. Like you know, like Black Sheriff is like number one artist in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. There's so, so many artists out of Ghana doing amazing things at the moment. Right. I think you know, there's a real energy out here, man. Right. And it's great to be part of it. And you know, back home. Like people from the UK, like Christmas is legendary in Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's a legendary moment. Like it's like the number one destination, not just for people homecoming, but people throughout the world want to then come. Then you here. should have been here in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Why Trying didn't to make you come? Up for it. it was homecoming for us. Oh Why yeah, didn't you oh come yeah, home? the return. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm back. Welcome. <laughs> On this side of the world, when you're a pastor's kid and you tend to venture into rap music, into DJing and all that, it's not easy. Especially if your daddy is a pastor. Mm -hmm. Your father is an Anglican bishop. Yeah, it was. He passed was away a few an years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when this started, was it frowned on? Did you have it easy at home? I mean, to be honest, I'd left home by the time I was, you know, oh, I left home when I was quite young. You were a bad boy early in life. Yeah, I'd, so I was doing my own thing from early and my dad was very proud of me being self-made. Ah, yeah. so you didn't have any issues. He didn't have any issues with No, you. he loved what I was doing. How about mommy? Was, uh, uh, my mum, who passed away last year, she oh, was very proud of me as well. Soul. Yeah, she was very proud of me, man. Like self-made, did my own thing in life and, um, right. you know, really tried, to, really tried to, you know, support what I was part of, man. Right. I see. Listen, so you've been on BBC Radio 1 and all that for nearly 20 yeah, years. Yeah, so I was uh, uh, I'm with a station called Capital Extra, which okay. is like number one in the UK at the mm -hmm. moment. So re re real great station there. Uh, before that, I was 20 years up at the BBC. And then I actually started with... Uh, 35 years now. So radio 35 years, yeah. but you were doing other BBC for 20 years. Yeah. How do you wake up every morning doing the same thing over and over again? Well, mostly I'm, I'm in the clubs a lot, um, so I don't wake up every morning. I wake up in the afternoon. But yeah, I'm up in the clubs doing my thing. 
uh, on the radio ripping it down. We've got Tim Westwood TV, which yeah, I'm really proud of. Exactly. Um, and, <clears throat> and the thing with Tim Westwood TV, we, that's our YouTube channel. We got there early. We've had a lot of tremendous Ghanaian artists come through. I know. We, first up was Saka D back in 2011. Saka D. Yeah. yeah, and that really like, set the tone mm. for what we're doing. That's a, like, got over like, nearly a million and a half video views. Mm. Mm. And then since then, it, like, everyone has come through. So, you, you know, Fuse OD, Stone Boy, Shakarawali, and then like, the newer the generations. Lists. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But you know, manifest uh, medical. You know what I mean? Uh, darker vibes, and then the guys like Kamasi mm -hmm. are coming through, which we're okay, really excited. Great. So one of one of the questions <clears throat> I wanted to ask you. Number one, so let's take it from, 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 the, from this side. Why are you in Ghana at this particular moment? Oh, d d we've got a couple of hot parties here okay. uh, on Friday. Mm. We're at Kruna Nightclub, so looking forward to tearing that down. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then uh, on Thursday, and remember, no work Friday. Right. On Thursday, we're in Kamasi at the Empire. Uh, Emperor Nightclub, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And so it's really great to come and DJ. I mean, that's what I am. Fundamentally, I mean, we do radio, we do clubs, but yeah, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a DJ up in the club. I see so, that. So, you know, play a lot of hip hop. Mm. Back home, we play a lot of dancehall. And, uh, uh, you know, Afrobeats is definitely running the world right Fantastic. now. Fantastic. I see. Now, I see the, the one on the 14th is in Kumasi. Yeah, in Kumasi. You're very familiar with the wave, with the Kumerican wave, Asaka Amazing. wave, the drill wave yeah, yeah. in Kumasi. When it's, it came off first, how did you feel about it? Well, I think drill music is really taking over the world. Hmm. And I think uh, in the UK, drill music was like a driving force of like the new generation of hip hop. And I think that really did influence the American market as right. well. And then, you, you know, you, you, you got the drill uh, out of Chicago, which really set it all off. And then and you've got the New York drill. And now you're seeing drill in Jamaica, what they call dancehall trap. Mm. And um, that's a, like a phenomenal movement as well. So I think drill is the, like the voice of, you know, the young artists, okay. it's the voice of the community, telling their stories, telling their lifestyle. And I think that's the real power of it. Mm. And we've had artists like Yard Tog come through, uh, Kofi Mole, uh, you know, all the artists come through. Right. Um, yeah. I see. So that's on the 14th, and then Accra is yeah. on the 15th. Yeah, looking forward to that on right. Friday. Be before you sat down, well, we had some gentlemen in the studio who were doing their own rap yeah. thing. They were doing the cipher thing. You are the king of ciphers. What went into the selection of these young men for this project that you're on? Oh, well, I mean, I thought these guys were great. Mm. I think they were, you know, new generation, new talent. Got a future there, so good luck to them, man. Yeah, exactly. they seem very blessed. Fantastic. But I see there are so many names on the list. Mm. What went into selecting these particular rappers for this I project? I mean, with, with us, we just pay attention to the heat, man. Okay. What's hot out there? What's right. making it happen? Right. You know what I mean? Mm. To party or oh, <laughs> to pull up, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely pull up. Yeah. Okay. Now I see you were mentioning names of people who had already been on mm. your show in the UK. So let's come to Ghana. Which artists did you look forward to the most on your show? T to be honest, we're really excited when they come into town. Right. They're normally in town as they've got the hot records and you know got a lot of heat. Right. Um, so each one we've been excited about. Each one's been a great interview. Each one is the freestyle's been amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, so we're really proud of what they've come and done and represented. And, um, you know, one thing I really admire about Ghana is, well, the blogs. The blogs are so active and got so much energy. Right. I really do love the Ghana blogs. I think probably in the world that you've got the hottest blogs here. And, you know, the blogs are like the voice of the community, right. man. So. Right. Well, I think Afrobeats have taken over the world. Mm. I think they've just absolutely taken over the world. And I don't think that's going to change. That's, that's like the new hip hop. Um, I think back home, it's been around for a long while in the sense uh, a, a lot of the student university crowd are African and they were like the initial energy really bringing it to the forefront. You know, back home is a big Nigerian community, Ghanaian community. So, but I think Ghana is so much on the rise. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. The, the drill and the new artists. Right. And I think Black Sheriff is going to sh change everything. You haven't, you haven't interviewed Black Sheriff yet. You haven't nah, had man. him on the no, show I'm so yet. excited about that. that will so, come, is it going to happen here in Ghana or you wait for him back home in the UK? I, I think it's going to happen in the UK because I think in a minute he'll be worldwide. Okay. Mm. So, you wait for him till he gets to, to, yeah. to the UK. Okay. Now, this is what I want to find out. You've been doing this for over 35 years do you mm. have proteges check you people you're training to take after you i mean to be honest 
it's not like I'm training, but I think I've been an influencer on a young generation of DJs who've come up on On The Rise. And I think that, like, the DJ community back home mm. is incredible, man. There's so many young guys with so much energy and so much talent. And, you know, I feel blessed that I've been able to influence them. Right. But now they also influence me. I pay attention to them. <laughs> exactly. And, you know... I pay attention to them, man. There's some great DJs back home for Afro beats, for dance, or for hip hop. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. Tim. Do you ever intend to retire? No, I, I, I don't see the point, really. Are you but, yeah, but walking, around Accra, walking around Accra, I'm really feeling I would love here to chill here more. I really would, man. Yeah. Maybe I should go and look at some apartments later today. Buy a house here. And Buy. Chill. Let's mm. make it into a home mm. for you. Since you don't intend. So if you're 85 and you're still very strong, you still be doing this. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna put you to the test this morning. If you're still gonna be doing this, we're gonna go to the 10 tables. Since you are my favorite. Yes. Yes. I didn't bring my laptop. Oh, so you can't do anything on JD's laptop. Can you do something? I, I don't know. Let's just give it a try. Let's, no, let's just... no, I'm good, fam. Come to the club, baby. We'll <laughs> Come to the club. Turn up in the club, baby. Let's get, let's Jenny, get you some alcohol. Jenny, he let's get you to... some alcohol and just oh. turn up in the club. So you want me to... Oh, no, yeah. Pop some bottles, baby. Drink a little Live your bit. best life, yeah. Live your best life. In the club. Oh, I think you should turn up, girl. Okay. Yeah. No problem at all. Yeah, I was, it's going to be an, a super lit event. Okay. So I'd love to see you there. Right. On the 14th yeah. in Kumasi and then on the 15th. I'll look at the flyer yeah. um, real quick and give you the details. Well, for the one in Kumasi, it's at the Emperor Nightclub. Uh, Emperor Nightclub, real lit nightclub. Looking forward to pulling it out. Okay, there. and tickets are going out for 150, 200, and 250, 300 Ghana CDs as well, depending on which corner of the club you want oh, to be it, at. You're going to be at the top table, girl. Yeah, for the one in Accra. It's only right. Yes, mm. for the one in Accra. I'm, I'm going to be at the top table. So, the Accra one is at the Kuna Nightclub, and of course, the prices are also still the same.